man. Jump on that, uh, that Twitter vibe. How to get that thing jumping. We got it jumping, though. Everybody hashtag G-U-H-H-A-T-L. We got it jumping. We trending right now. We yeah, the power of the internet. Love it. We don't stop. I'm a real executive producer. I'm watching. I'm watching it too. Power 92, number one in the streets, it's your boy Hot Rod, the lit pit and full of fag man, got the homie in the building. Bow Wow, what's up, man? What up with it, man? I'm here. Man, first time meeting you, bro, it's a pleasure. Nah, no, I appreciate it, Living man. Living legend right here in front of my face. Thank you, thank you, thank you. What's going on, man? You in Chicago, first off, what's yeah. going on in Chicago? Man, everything tonight, man, we at the Ivy, you know, um... You know, we on a promo tour, that's what we like to call it, but for me, it's kind of like a celebration tour, you know, it's like the rebirth of, of me, you know, and, and, and to be in the city, to, to jump off my 31st birthday celebration and, 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 and to mash it up with the whole entire single and the release of Yeah, my brand new single that we just dropped last week, um, it's just a, it's a beautiful situation, it's a big move, so that's what we in the city for, we just spreading the love and touching the people and blasting off this record and, you know, we in the streets heavy right now. Damn, I appreciate you coming to Chicago, right, what, what made you choose Chicago? How can I not choose Chicago? <laughs> I got so much history with Chicago from me feeling road bounce here to me actually living in Chicago for several months to me actually going back and forth uh, from Atlanta to Chicago for <laughs> a reason. So I've been in and out the shot and a lot of people don't even know it, but I've probably been in Chicago probably more times than ever. Like this past year. Nah, see, nah, we need to know because you know we're like. <laughs> nah, but Chicago always been a city where, like, you know, I think once I got here for, even before Road Bounce, like, I was always like, yo, every time I go to Chicago, like, my fans, it's just to the 80th power here. Like, they just go the hardest. It's crazy. Like, the, even like the Evergreen Plaza situation years back, just getting chased out the mall. Like, Chicago was always the front runner for, for Bow Wow. And it's like, even to this day, I always make sure that. Always come back, touch the people, vibe with the people. And then for me to do road bounce, for me to do an iconic movie like that for it to mean something to, to the culture and everybody who grew up with me, for us to shoot that in the city. And, and not only in the city, but in familiar spots, in familiar you know areas of Chicago, that's going to always hold something close to the people in Chicago. So for me, you would think this is like my second or third home. So I'm always in the shot. I, I, I remember the Evergreen Plaza situation. I was, yeah. I was, I was, I was a shorty too. So. Yeah, it was crazy. But that yeah. was like the most... <laughs> Yeah, to this day, that's one of the craziest moments of my life. Man, hey, so I'm glad you're in the city, man. You got the new single, yeah. And you put that out Quick. on social media. Yeah. And just tell us how that all is. Yeah, well, shout out to my boy, Evan. You know what I'm saying? He produced the record. Um, and pretty much, you know, once we did it, I was like, like, what do we do with it? And see, Pimpin' the type of dude, like, y'all was growing up, Pimpin' Atlanta, which we on right now. We on right now. If y'all turn on WeTV, we on right now, the show's on right now. He's the king of like, man, we need to drop it. Like, drop it, man, drop it. We making all this music, you just sitting on it, man, drop it. So I said, I don't want to just drop the record. But like, what if we just give them like a minute clip on IG and let's see where it go. If, if they go crazy for it, then let's roll with it. And we dropped it. Like 20 minutes later, like, Vibe Magazine emailing us, hitting him, everybody going crazy, JD phone blowing up, so Jermaine come in the studio like, yo, what, what, what did y'all do? <laughs> Why is Bow Wow trending on Twitter? Like, that was his whole thing. He, he didn't even know what was going on. He just saw me trending on Twitter, and JD was in the room like, what did you do now? Like, it's only February. What? I'm like, dog, we ain't do nothing. We just put out a, a, a song. Like, he said, a full song? I'm like, nah, it's like a little snippet off, off IG. And he was like, oh. Cause it's taking off like it's crazy, and when we saw the reaction, I said, "So he didn't hear it. He didn't hear it. He didn't. He heard it once. Jermaine heard it once. I put the first verse down before I even had the hook on, and we put Gucci like the whole nine yards. Like I called him when I got done with the verse. I said, JD, you need to come in here.' And he's like, Fool. "I said, you need to come listen to this." One. And he came, and all I had was the verse, and he was like, "No, this is stupid." And I said, I'm, "I'm gonna have it done in like ten more minutes. Give me ten more minutes." Finished it, the whole record in like 15, 20 minutes. It was a no record. Record is crazy. Appreciate it. Thanks. Record is crazy. We're yeah. breaking that tonight. Absolutely. And you know what? This, you know, you put that out. What what made you get back into the whole rap scene and everything? Yeah. It was time. You know, it was time. And I always flirted with the idea of, of, um, of like retirement. But I was pretty much trolling the people. You know, I wanted I wanted them to, uh, to miss me a little bit. You know, I wanted to step away. You know, I had my daughter. 
I wanted to be in her life. You know, a lot of a lot of things that I, I've done in my career within like the past five years, whether it's hosting 106 and Park for two years, and, you know, moving out to LA for two years and to take CSI. A lot of it was designed around my daughter, so I had time to be around her and you know get it back. But at the same time, I wanted to enjoy taking her to school or a parent teacher conference or a recital. I never did it. So for me, I wanted to have those moments, and I needed content to talk about. I knew if I lived my life the best way I could, I could come back into the game at 30. I'm still young. You know, I'm older than Wiz Khalifa. That sounds crazy, but it's facts. Like, that's my that's my partner, but I'm older than Wiz. So, you know, I just knew that I could always just come back, but I, I needed some content, you know what I'm saying? And I grew as a man, and because I'm a grown man now, I'm able to talk about the things that you hear in you. It was kind of crazy. But oh, yeah. <laughs> that's the life that I've been living. So it's refreshing and it's new to the public. It's new. So that's why everybody just gravitates to the song like that. Man, so you got the, you know, the newcomers coming up now. Like, I want to know, like, who you watching and who you talking to? To be honest, um, listening to me, uh, I don't listen to nobody. To be real with you, I don't listen to nobody. Uh, and the reason being is because nowadays all the music is, is, is so, is so real. Not the mu- not that the music is repetitive, but it gets played so much that I'm going here, so I don't gotta find it or chase it and look at this. I just put on like if I'm in Chicago, I turn on the station. I know I'm gonna hear the hottest records, so I don't really gotta hear a whole project really. But one thing that we do do anytime somebody drop an album, you know this true, Pen, we always skim through your album. We always skim it through your album, and it take me I skim like 13 seconds. That's how I get through your album. 13 seconds. Listen, okay, I'm gonna go to the next. Third. Okay, that's. That's how I complete it, but that's how we rock with it. I don't got no particular artists on it. Yeah, I don't got no particular artists on this one. If you don't got four cuts, like a hit record to me, like the first time I turn on within the first 10 seconds, I'm supposed to be like, okay, this sounds like something. If it don't hit me like it don't sound like nothing, I'm skipping, I'm on to the next. So you got to at least have like three or four of those on your project for it to be somewhere to be successful. No, that's dope. I mean, like I said, that's what I'm doing. Yeah. Yeah, this is it. That's it. Absolutely. Absolutely. All that stuff. You know, this 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 dope coming from a legend like yourself, and you know, they didn't even call you a legend. Like, yeah, how, that's how, how does you're 31? Yeah, and a legend. Like, how does that feel? I don't really feel it because I'm me. But you know, I didn't know like the press was gonna take that and like run with it. Like they, I they took that and ran with it. Not saying that it's, it's, it's all fact, but that talk was real. Yeah. You know, and you know, it was after the whole Bow Wow China stuff, and you know, Puff just pulled me to the side. It was like Puff career. Yeah. 
Yeah, yeah we on right now. All right. Right now, as we speak, we on Instagram Live going right now. We on We TV right now. Growing up, pick up Atlanta, uh, season two. Are we trending? Oh, number six. Yeah, we number six. Trend. We need to be number one though. You better tell these people. Yeah, hey, we need everybody. Yeah, we, yeah, we know it. top ten is cool, but we want to be number one. That, hey, like, this this show, I haven't got a chance to really sit down and watch it all the way through, but mm -hmm. bro, this is playing this show to everybody. You know? Yeah, man, growing up hip-hop Atlanta, um, pretty pretty uh, much self-explanatory. It's a reality show that, you know, follows the lives of young millennials who are trying to maneuver through the game and trying to create their own path without, you know, uh, let's say, for instance, like Resident Carter, that's Wayne's daughter. You know, she's trying to maneuver and find her way without, you know, getting things handed to her because she is Wayne's daughter. So that's what the show really is. And, and it follows our real life. Like, even me finding, yeah, this single, you know, we, that's tonight's episode, me playing the music for Jermaine. Dupree for the first time. That's this episode tonight. And, you know, me and him haven't been seeing eye to eye at all throughout this whole album process. You know what I mean? So you follow that as well. And it's just pretty much everything that you want to know in the now of me is you find you find it all out on the show every Thursday night. 9A Central on TV. <laughs> you know I got a plug. Commercial. Yeah, you know, I'm the executive producer too, so you know I got to plug all that in. You know, I got to make sure they watch and I got to keep them ratings up. You know what I mean? Man, I, I'm loving it, bro. Hey, so, also, you gotta talk about the Johnny Blaze beef. Yeah, oh, God. I, I, I'm gonna get on the same as I be giving it uh, when I be doing my green screen. Like, it's really no beef. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't beef with nobody. I don't have no beef. You know what I'm saying? I love life too much. I love to have fun. I'm not that type of person. And, I'm, and, I'm, and, I'm, and, I, and you know, as men, I don't think it's fly to be beefing with no woman. Like, I don't get no stripes to that. But it's really nothing. Like, I don't know. You know, I, I really don't know what it is. Like, it, you know, like in my green screen, they was asking me, like, yo, what is it? I'm like, yo, I don't have an answer. I really don't, I don't know. Like, nah, but that's like the opening scene of tonight's episode. It starts off with me and her, like, her apologizing. And, like, you really see, like, I'm like, I don't want to hear it. Like, I'm cool. Like, why am I here right now? Like, I could be somewhere else. But, nah, that's all good. That's the energy, man. You loving life, man. Like, damn, you know, living life. Living. Hooping against lots of ball. ball. Yeah, that was dope. Like, that was like, Snoop FaceTime me. The other, like, yes, was it yesterday? I think it might have been yesterday. Snoop Face Time, he was like, man, I wanted to put in your comments. I hate you, man. I was going to put a whole bunch of just rude stuff under your comments, man, because he know, like, that's just the, you know, he, he he's a new young cat. He was coming through Atlanta. They played the Hawks, and, you know, I had, my man was with him. He wanted to meet me, and I said, you know, bring him to, bring him to the compound. Let's get it in, and, you know, we got the indoor gym at our spot. Like full court, like regulation style. So it was no way I'm letting five Lakers walk in our place, and I'm not bringing Lonzo on the court. Like you gotta come on the court, shoot around. Even if we just talking, I just want to see what it's like. And then for me, the form, you know, the form though. But you know he was making it though. That's what's crazy. Like you gotta see it in part. Like we had him at the house, like in our gym. Like he is awkward, but he was making it. But I still took that second round. On, I see. You know what I mean? So that's why I'm, you know, everybody so we, we're going around here. I know you off the deal, but we gotta have one. Go. We gotta have one. one. We gotta have one round. Let's do it. One round. Best out of ten. Out of ten paper balls. <laughs> All right, we'll be yeah. shooting them at. We go. We gonna shoot them in the, the ratchet garbage. You gonna hold them? She gonna hold them. What? I was gonna use y'all as a fat boy. She was in the glass. I got it. I was gonna use y'all as a fat boy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Glass. I mean, yeah, yeah. Off the glass. Look, she like, don't start laughing. Hey. So, man, like, okay, so your birthday coming up, man. Yeah, eight days. Yeah. Let's just go back, man, all the way back to your career, man. You've been at this for a minute. Long time. So, you know, you coming in the game young, and I know you've been with the rap game kids as well. Right, yeah, yeah. What advice are you giving them? Uh, for me, it's just, you know, it's like a mirror image of watching myself. I just tell them to, you know, stay focused. Don't worry about growing up too fast. You know what I'm saying? I never really understood that until now. Um, you definitely want to make sure that you have people around you who you can trust, who you love. Because in this business, a lot of people can take advantage of you, especially, you know, a lot of us lack knowledge. You know, a lot of these, even if you look at the, the, the new rappers that's coming up, right? You know, a lot of these, a lot of these cats is coming from their bedrooms, from laptop to mainstream. It's like, whoa, it's like a big leap. So you really got to make sure you study your craft, you know what's going on, and have people around you who you can trust, who can help you, you know, gather all this information that you're going to need. Because you can have the talent, 
that's cool, but you can also get taken advantage of if you don't got the brains to go with the talent. You know what I mean? And, and you, for me, you can even watch some of the best, like you watch Dr. Dre. You know, two times he was taken advantage of before he became who he was now. You know, so everybody learns a lesson, but you can avoid having to learn a lesson if you jump on it early and get it going. So that's what I always tell them. You know what I'm saying? And definitely don't grow up too fast. So, I mean, I think it was tough making that, you know, from child. Growing up, was that what nah, nah, because most of these cats get into drugs, and they, you know what I'm saying, they, they veer off and go left, um, they just get weird on us, you know, yeah. for me, I never really had that issue in life, I never really had a drug problem, I never been to jail before in my life, I never been arrested, you know what I'm saying, so, uh, I never even started to trail down that, down that road, which you see, I'm probably like the only one, like, me and Omar, y'all might be the only ones that never been in trouble, you know what I'm saying, not to take away from nothing, but that's just facts. We probably the only ones that never been in trouble. And I'm me at 31. I'm supposed to have like eight kids now. Like by now, like all the scream tours I've been on it. Like for real. Wait, wait, hold on. I'm wait. just saying. Like <laughs> when I was in high school, you were just taking all the ladies for me because I'm saying. Like, I'd be like, man, you know what? What's up? And I got up? one. And I got that one. And I got one so, kid. Man. So for me, I'm like, I'm. I this is a fan question right here. All right. When did you lose your virginity? I lost my virginity at, uh, at 16. 16? Yeah, I lost. Somebody, you said you lied? No, I said don't lie. Oh, no. I lost 16. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Somebody, they, they, was, they, was, they thought it was nine. Oh, uh, hell no. <laughs> <laughs> hell no. Nah. Now, it was 16. You know, I was nervous. Like, I was like, I don't, I got to be cautious. I don't trust nobody. I got to I'll wait till I'm 16. <laughs> I waited. God, I didn't hear, like, stories from, my, like, my OGs that's yeah. in the radio game. They was like... I guess you, my, my, old, my old G, Shag Nice, mm-hmm. and he said, yeah, yeah, I was in a hotel room. And-